Okay, so it's recording now. Third time's a charm. Welcome to the Package Managers Weekly Sync uh, for April 23rd, 2019. I am Andrew, uh, hosting, standing in for Aching Brain this week, who is uh, not here for whatever reason. And um, so we're going to go around and do any updates that people have related to the Package Managers Working Group stuff. Uh, I'll start off. Uh, I've been writing up a kind of a narrative document, almost like a very long blog post of how IPFS concepts map onto existing package manager concepts uh, with the specific focus of being able to kind of give that to a package manager maintainer and have them kind of uh, onboard themselves into how I can start to step their package manager into the world of IPFS. So it's not a kind of complete, here's how to build a decentralized package manager on IPFS, but it's more how to augment your existing package manager with IPFS whilst learning about the different kind of pieces of technology that are involved like uh, IPNS, IPLD, uh, and similar kind of steps, especially thinking about it as like, okay, well, how does someone go about publishing their first package and then how do you index the number of different versions for a package then how do you kind of keep track of a number of different packages and how that maps with existing ways that package managers work so that's um the link is in the the notes it's an ongoing google doc that i hope to kind of start to get some feedback on soon uh also had a informal package manager meetup in london with eric Ollie and Alex, and we talked about a number of performance problems and potential ways of um, negating some of that, as well as an interesting discussion around uh, NPMs. Um, it has the ability now in the client to specify package releases before a given date as a a way of kind of avoiding, like almost not requiring a lock file by saying I only want package releases before a given date, but it actually happens on the client, not on the server. So if the data in the server changes, say a package gets yanked, then that will, it, it still asks the server for everything and the client just decides it only wants a subset of what it gets back. Whereas what we could do with NPM on IPFS is actually pass through the CID of a root of the MFS drive on our uh, NPM registry copy, which would give you a, a, a snapshot in time uh, of the whole of the registry so that even if something gets deleted at a later date, you'd still be able to roll back and uh, ensure that you've got some amount of reproducibility. Uh, I also started looking into how we could add IPFS support to the Athens project, which is a proxy uh, service for Go package management, as in you would point your, um, your Go modules configuration at an Athens server, which would cache or uh, serve straight from cache the modules rather than you going out to many different Git repositories across GitHub, mostly, um, works for both private and public things. And has a really nice interface for building storage adapters, which we could potentially build an IPFS storage adapter. It's written in Go, so uh, there's quite a lot of crossover with Go IPFS there, uh, and could be another way of reintroducing storing package content on IPFS for the, uh, for the Go projects in IPFS and other in protocol labs, now that GX has kind of been abandoned. So, uh, it looks to me like there's a, a quite a happy path to, to get there fairly quickly um, and to actually kind of propose that as part of one of the, they have a weekly call. Um, so I might dive in there and see how amenable they'd be to adding that as support. Um, not blocked on anything. And next I'll be carrying on with the documenting that I've been doing so far. Jessica, do you want to go? Uh, so, um, 
I was away for much of last week at DPLA Fest, um, helped lead a workshop there, not specifically package manager related, but was really useful for onboarding. Um, blocked on nothing, so next steps are just really sort of um, need to formalize my actual work plan. We're gonna have some chats about that this week and just get some stuff set up. Um, I know some things that are on my radar were issues 41 and 42, um, the first of which is documenting the stages and the types of package managers and then also the feedback loop between users and core dev um, need to dig a little bit deeper into that to see um, how I can be useful in each of those issues. And then also um, just want to keep the discussion alive about um, progressive UX for sort of a menu bar app versus um, IPFS desktop for um, where we, we might want to live um, with, with um, the actual visual feedback um, for, uh, for package managers. And then also maybe dive a little bit into um, uh, command line messaging as well. I know that Porsche put together a best practices for that elsewhere, um, so we can definitely borrow from that, um, but just want to make sure that that doesn't fall off um, anyone's radar. That's about it for now. If, um, if anything feels amiss or uh, feels like I'm going in the wrong direction, please let me know because I'm still sort of you know, finding my way. Eric, do you want to go? Um, yeah, sure. I don't know if I have a ton to comment on other than, yeah, we had a lovely chat in London. Um, I would still, so I, I always kind of have the same wish list and it's like, let's try to figure out some more like some simple bullet points of like how to categorize these things. And so this week, um, thanks in large part to conversation with Andrew, I'm doing a, I have a draft of like a cladistic tree of different levels of integration choices that we could make with uh, IPFS and package managers. And so like branch one, and this is trying to make it just like, you know, did you ever do like a high school biology textbook where you're trying to like, what kind of an organism is this? And it has like yes, no questions. Does it have fins? You know, um, so this is trying to get onto that level and make it super explicit. Like, does this use IPFS at all? Yes, no. Does it, um, does it use IPFS to store raw content on the leaves? And like, does that, um, does the CID actually show up in the index and then increasingly deep into this? And so it, it ended up being a very kind of like right leaning tree for deeper integration as you keep saying yes. So that was, uh, I guess, a simpler structure than I expected. Um, and at the bottom, it kind of opens up into uncharted territory. So I was initially unsure if, yeah, um, I was initially unsure if this would be worth sharing publicly or not because it gets to that uncharted territory at the end, but I guess the feedback I'm getting from folks so far is like, yes, we should super share that. So I guess that'll be showing up in an issue later today or something. I don't know where else to put it. That's, that's my item for the week. Molly, do you want to ask things? Yeah. Um, one thing is I had a, um, a quick Twitter, Twitter conversation. I think, you know, the folks working on Wasmer, um, which is kind of a new Wasm package manager, which I believe is releasing today, tomorrow, imminently, um, which is exciting. And one of the things on their roadmap is IPFS integration. Um, so I've scheduled a, a chat um, kind of with them as um, you know, a, a group of package manager users who want to learn more about how they can use IPFS for package managers with this group, because it's also super edifying for us to talk to people who are trying to use this um, and, and like have prioritized this somewhat on their own um, to figure out like how we can best serve their needs, what their pain points have been so far and stuff like that. Um, and so I'm tentatively trying to schedule that for Thursday morning. Um, if so far, I, I think I just put the package manager working group um, email list in, in the email thread, but if anyone in between, I'll try and make sure that you get looped into the meeting um, to, to chat more about exactly how they foresee themselves using IPFS, which of your cladistic tree leaves, Eric, that they, uh, they're interested in pursuing so far. Um, I also had a super long chat with Stephen last night about potentially valuable um, tools built on top of IPFS for different types of package managers um, that are like, seem to be um, 
feasible and, and valuable in the near term. Um, and this is kind of with the goal of how, how do we work with other partners in the ecosystem who are already trying to you know, demonstrate value um, where we could add additional value or meet an unserved need that some group of users is having with package managers, which eventually hopefully will have things like reliable default adoption that can really be stress testing IPFS every single time they use it. Um, and we had kind of like three top level ideas. Um, one was um, chatting more with the Cloudflare folks about CDNJS and um, finding a way to more effectively be a, a cache or mirror, a local mirror for things like CDNJS um, so that when you're loading websites, you kind of only install uh, these like really common JS scripts once and then every website you visit that uses the same jQuery thing um, can grab it from IPFS instead of reloading it from Cloudflare. Um, another one was thinking about Linux distros where you have really crappy internet, um, where you're trying to like pass Ubuntu mirrors from machine to machine because Ubuntu mirrors are very large um, and therefore the cost of running an IPFS node would uh, be much smaller than having to load every Ubuntu mirror separately. And the finally was, uh, the other one was not Linux, but Windows and Chocolatey which I think he's already commented a few times on the package managers repo about um, some, you know, kind of w where things are. And Andrew, I know you did a, a little bit of an analysis of where chocolatey would be, um, but definitely a big thing for that one is uh, since windows computers are personal, it would be not traversal and stuff like that. But we we're just, we we're just brainstorming. So we want to make sure that the outputs of our brainstorm, uh, you know, continue percolating outwards for the next set of brainstorms. Cool, yeah, so uh, I also would stumbled across another um, Windows chocolatey like package manager um, today called Scoop. It looks a lot like Homebrew, um, whereas chocolatey looks a lot like Nougat, the Windows.net um, package manager. Uh, both of them work in a kind of a, a bit of a meta um, way in that they're, they really provide the package manager itself and its registry is really a set of install scripts, which include a URL to go fetch the actual binary uh, from somewhere else, which may or may not continue to be present. Uh, so in the same way that um, Homebrew does, although Homebrew now is is moving towards more um, caching or like, publishing the resulting binary of building the source code into their own infrastructure, which is bin tray right now. Um, and these like um, chocolatey actually sells the like slightly more reliable version as their pro version. So they're unlikely to want to kind of undermine their own business model uh, by having everything automatically go out to IPFS. But there's also like questions around the um, storing the uh, the binaries for private or like non open source applications on IPFS may rattle some cages, uh, but those binaries are free to download from those websites. Uh, it's just that you may have to go through like a privacy policy or similar before you've actually like agreed to download it. Um, so bit of a gray area, I guess, uh, and maybe it would be more of an opt in individual packages for the, like to enable that IPFS cache rather than, um, rather than just try and like wholesale archive the whole of every windows binary for random proprietary packages or applications. Is there any other um, points that people want to bring up? Um, maybe Chris, as you're uh, new here. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I should let y'all know I'm applying for the JS Core Technical Manager position right now. Um, super excited about what Protocol Labs is doing. Uh, I'm joining this meeting mostly because I have a little bit of an itch to scratch about identity 
and I'm curious how it fits in the package manager world. So in a nutshell, what I'm thinking about with identity um, is really, if you think about the design space, there's kind of like three kinds of identity. There's personal identity, which is what, you know, is actually the real thing. Um, then there's like your verifiable stuff, which is, I think of like your, you know, um, uh, two factor auth or just your basic password login, like whatever those practices are. Um, they're which enough and that's derived identity which is like what um your isp knows about you whether or not you want them to uh and so i kind of think that if we build tools for instance if we built a tool that made the history of the debian package repo transparent um as far as like oh like that's weird there's a that one um signature didn't validate like we're taking a closer look at that one or um oh they changed maintainers on that package there so like kind of red, yellow, green for different states in the graph. Um, just those kind of tools, if you built them out for package managers, would be incredibly useful in that domain. But I think they would also transfer horizontally to the kind of thing that could help end users understand like what um, third parties are processing about them and whatnot. So I don't know. That's kind of that's what I think is fun about this stuff right now. Yeah, there's some kind of gaping chasms as well between especially when it comes to kind of reproducibility and the chain of verification of like, we look at GitHub repositories and they say like, Oh, this release was published. And then there's like a jump <laughs> that's happened. It's usually happened on someone's laptop arbitrarily. And then there's a package on NPM or Ruby gems and there's no guarantee of anything between those two places other than like, can if i can run the same script and end up with the same package that uh people will often and even there's applications dependabot and greenkeeper will often reference the change log for a, a new package has been published but when they automatically open a pull request to say like oh there's a new update for this thing they reference the data that they got from github not from the actual diff of the uh, between the published packages on the package manager because the data is lossy in that all of the history of the changes that went through and the change log may not exist inside the package whereas it does exist on github so they just hope and dream that the um there was no one made any changes along the way uh, and it becomes very difficult to kind of <laughs> to be sure of what happened there or if the same person did the same thing because most registries don't really give you that kind of log of what happened on behind the scenes they really only give you the uh, the end result and then there's like the actual work the reproducible builds project is putting in um that eric can definitely talk more about yeah i guess my my take on that stuff is that you can try to um use validation to enforce everything is perfect but like you're still going to get weird slip ups that get into the system in the history or somehow when the validation's not active or whatever um and so the the approach that's necessary that is kind of like similar to that derived identity approach is to look at what's actually there and then give people road feel for like again like kind of red yellow green for the different parts in the graph so that as a developer, you can know whether you're getting into a tangled mess or if some part of your dependency chain is relatively clean. I don't know if we've talked about that very much in this group yet, because a lot of our focus has been on like more directly, how do we start conversations about content addressability, even for places that don't have that yet, because God knows it's too many. Um, but I think that's a really an awesome whole range of conversations. Um, another keyword that might be a good search term in case you haven't stumbled upon it by luck is um, binary transparency, sort of like certificate transparency. Um, I don't know if that term is being used super actively anymore, but there's a couple like mailing lists and archives that have discussed that topic a little bit. Um, it sounds like you've thought about this so much already that maybe everything in there will be old hat to you. But, oh, I've thought about, you know, the breadth of it. I think I remember going to one conference talk from somebody who was trying to build a new um, package manager that was all signed, you know, turtles all the way down. But, um, you know, that's the ideal, but you can't validate everything and you can't, um, can't clean up history. You just can note, note what's going on there. 
some of the interesting things that I think we've can say we've discovered in this group is also that uh, putting putting like naming stuff on too early in the design or too too centrally can get really weird because like we're all here because we have content addressable content and then like ideally we would love to have like content addressable indices and immutable metadata for stuff like that which is a little bit more of an exercise because it's just more into like opinion land for the people who've built these systems historically making that composable is like <laughs> wish for sure yeah i mean right uh, except for the ever the brightest minds of our generation are doing it to sell ads <laughs> um yeah so if you have a bunch of thoughts about how different forms of identity could be related to packaging stuff and you've got like some fire in your heart to write about it do it <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was looking at there's a, the, I, I think I know where the right place to file issues like that is. I saw kind of some idea brainstorming in one of the repos for package stuff. Yeah, the, the package managers repository is a great place to just um, to open up issues and with like discussion areas or like pointers to like, here's something interesting, uh, hopefully to get a kind of a collection of everything that might be related to IPFS and package managers, whether it's short term or whether it's really long term, it's all like a good uh, kind of mixing pot to to throw stuff in. We haven't really started talking about uh, different forms of identity. The other thing that springs to mind there, and it's something that technically I can't do any work on until July uh, because of a non-compete, um, is in solving some of the chain of or like the uh, kind of the ability to to kind of ar archive your way back and work out what's going on and highlight points that are like, eh, not so trustworthy or this is weird, um, is the the kind of um, due diligence and security and licensing around open source that companies open themselves up to all kinds of risk and uh, actually being able to kind of to raise red flags for companies and go, Hey, did you realize like the somewhere along the chain of this, there was a, a relicensing from a GPL project to a MIT project that shouldn't have happened. And like, if the original person finds that out, then they can like bounce all the way back up the chain and your proprietary software that is built on top of GPL software potentially then gets into all kinds of mess uh, and companies are aware of the risks and are very uh oh hello zoom what's you uh uh sorry zoom's just telling me i've got three minutes for some reason um <laughs> uh companies are quite like they they value the risk uh assessment enough to actually pay for tooling to be able to to do that it's just that the data going into it is really crappy and companies tend to hoard whatever quality data they can get rather than sharing that back out. And really that data should be like part of the open source projects. If it's been collected around that, it should be uh, like, it was based off the commons, it should be available uh, in, the, um, in the commons of that project uh, in a kind of a continual way. Um, but I think we have run out of time. That's uh, the end of the slot. Um, so thanks everyone for coming and uh, we'll see you again next week. I'm gonna stop recording now. <laughs>